Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week 8 of AEW Dynamite for 2021. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to do a show this week, and we are kicking things off with John Moxley vs. Nick Modern, uh, um, Dolph Ziggler's brother. Um, surprising to see Moxley opening the show this week. Um, to be fair, for the last, uh, for a couple of weeks, uh, Young Bucks opened the show, so it's weird to see this, but actually very good. Uh, I don't remember much about the card for this show. I know we've got Britt Baker versus um, Nairi Rose coming up. Uh, we've got the, n the new signee of Paul White, uh, which is Big Show. Uh, we know uh, that they're doing an AEW Dark uh, variation or something like that. We'll find more about that tonight. And we also have Lance Archer versus Phoenix in the match for the tournament, uh, for the ladder match. So, Let's watch more of AEW Dynamite with Moxley uh, in the match. So, we just had John Moxley versus uh, Ryan uh, Namek. Um, I got the name wrong, I do apologize about that. Uh, this was a good few minute match. Um, it was very entertaining, very high paced. Uh, a lot of offense from Ryan. Uh, but then Pound Anship gets the win for uh, Mr. Moxley. Then Moxley cuts a fantastic promo building up the match for uh, Revolution which I have to be honest I'm kind of looking forward to now because of that promo he basically just says that he wants to commit violence and win, lose or draw I'm going to leave everything in the ring and at the end of it I really want to watch this match now because it's damn fucking good it's going to be explosive so um, it's Excalibur explains what's going to happen. The ropes are going to be uh, laced with barbed wire and there's going to be explosives on the floor. So it is a little bit different to a uh, normal barbed wire um, exploding death match where the barbed wire and the um, explosions will be in the uh, entangled together i.e. Uh, kind of a death match final with Mr. Captain Jack and Terry Funk. Then there was a build-up package uh, documenting the history of violence between both men, which was another reason why it's good storytelling in this storyline. Uh, then we had a promo backstage with uh, Lance Archer and Ray Phoenix, building up their feud, um, you know, for the match tonight, the main event. Uh, very entertaining. And then talking about the incident with Sting, and yeah, building that up. We also have Jake Hager versus Brian Cutler. And Sorry, Brian, but, uh, sorry, Brandon, but you're losing tonight. I'm sorry, mate. But to be honest, yeah, so far, great way to kick off the show. Great way to actually start it as well. Really entertaining. Uh, we also have uh, Nairo Rose and Britt Baker going one-on-one -on -one, uh, in the semi-finals of the women's tournament. Looking forward to that. So, yeah, so far, so good. Great way to kick off the show. Very high-paced, and uh, hopefully it will carry on. And I think it's going to, guys. So, let's get back to the action. So, uh, we just had a, a backstage bit with the Young Bucks and their parents uh, explaining about the um, feud between them, uh, Joko and MJF, uh, taking a picture of their truck, uh, which is very entertaining, I think. Very funny. Um... Then we've got Team Taz versus the Varsity Blondes, and I have to admit, Pillman Jr. reminds me so much of his dad. Just the way he moves in the ring, holy fucking shit, he is bloody good. Rick Garrison as well is very entertaining as well, I have to admit that. Uh, this was a very great dynamic, you know, this is a great way to put these two teams together, uh, to put these two talents together, um, Garrison and uh, Pillman Jr., and just put them together as the Varsity Blondes. It does remind me of, it does so much remind me of Hollywood Bones, Austin and um, Pillman Jr. It really, uh, well, Brian Pillman, it really does. Um, so we're in picture and picture at this moment in time. We have a good team match so far. Uh, nice baseball slide by um, Pillman Jr. to the outside and then get a power bomb and thrown back into the win by Cage. Uh, Cage hasn't been in the match too much. Uh, I think they're going to save him. Plus, I feel like something's going to happen with Stin because Stin wants revenge on what happened last week with the power bomb. Sorry about the smoke, guys. Uh, easy. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, to be honest, it's going to be quite entertaining. 
uh, to see what's going to happen because I'm not particularly a fan of the storyline with these guys but I think we'll see how it goes and I think we'll see what happens with this um, maybe they'll get a substitute coming in for Stin or there might be a, there might be something that happens I don't know but we will see that um, so yeah let's carry on watching the match and have some fun so we just had the finish of the Dar uh, Varsity Blondes and Team Taz match. This was very entertaining. Oh come on! Sorry guys, my video has been a bit wonky on the recording side, so I do apologise about that. Um, but this this match was uh, very good. You know, again, Varsity Blondes do remind me a lot of the Hollywood Blondes. I have to admit that one. And they're just entertaining. They're really, really fucking good. I've got to admit that one. Um, if it's a, you know, it's a good match. Uh, finish of the match was a discus twelve line from Brian Cage, so t uh, team tries to get the win. Then we had Stin uh, in the driving seat of the car, uh, reveals to be Darby Allen in the body bag, and then as soon as uh, Stin comes out in a body bag is Hawk. So we're building up that, um, and then they ba uh, Darby Allen. Zips line in, and they both beat the crap out of Team Taz, building up the feud. Um, and I've got to kind of admit, it wasn't the best. It wasn't a. It wasn't the best beatdown that I've seen, but I was kind of impressed by what Sting did. You know, we saw the splash, we saw the um, Scorpion Death drop, uh, but it was really good. And as far as I can tell. I don't think Stin has any win lost. I mean, that's me personally, but I still don't think this match should go down personally. But at the same time, I don't know. Because one of these things is I'm torn. Torn between this match. I'm also torn between the six-man tag coming up next week uh, with FTR and Tully Bunch taking on Jurassic Express. I was having a conversation with somebody a, few, uh, a couple of hours ago about this whole dynamic. And this person, you know, the person who thinks that um, Tess Blanchard will debut for AEW. And I kind of have to admit, I kind of want to see that, weirdly. You know, Tully comes out, FTR come out, um, and instead of saying, uh, oh, it's Tully? No, it's Tessa. But we've, I've kind of seen too much of Tessa versus, you know, Tessa versus insert name here. We saw it with um, Sammy Callahan as much in Impact. But, at the same time, it'd be a great way for her to debut, you know, as the third person, and, you know, destroy a smart role. Uh, I will find out who it's, you know, I will I will say who the person is that's actually said this all to me. Um, but I kind of like the idea of that in a weird way. Um, and then, you know, have her put in the women's division for, you know, up to a year to see if she's, you know, plays ball, plays fair doesn't really let her ego uh, play much into it, um, which I can get, I understand completely, uh, but if she can, I think she'd be a great asset to AEW Dynamite, to be honest with you guys. Uh, so we'll see what our next matchup is in our next segment, so let's do it. So we just had the sit-down interview with uh, Mero, Sabian and Penelope Ford, and they go, oh, our wedding was ruined. It wasn't. It could have been a lot worse. But then... <laughs> Oh my god, a note gets passed to Tony Schiavone, and it just says, Will you wrestle us at Revolution? Circle your answer, yes, no, maybe. <laughs> I love that, I think that's a fucking nice touch. So, but they, you know, and Mero wants Charles the Butler to come back to, you know, their, their side, fair enough. Um, he then just eats it and just spits it at Tony Schiavone, I think that's fucking brilliant. Uh, love it. So now we've got uh, Jake Hager versus Brandon Cutler. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a two-minute squash match. So, we just had, um, uh, we just had Brandon Cutler and Jake Hager. Um, very surprising. J uh, Brandon Cutler got a lot of offense in this match, actually. It was very impressive by him. But, in the end, Hager wins with the, uh, scoop slam for the one, two, three. Uh, Hager's fucking on another level now. You know, fucking wheelbarrow suplexing and stuff like that. Holy shit, this guy's fucking... This guy's fucking impressive. And uh, then, Young Bucks come out. Well, Inner Circle come out, beat down Brandon Cutler, then um, 
the uh, young bloods come out to basically uh, attack them, call out MJF and Jericho, and then uh, fucking uh, Jericho and MJF basically beat the shit out of uh, Papa Buck, throwing me into the uh, you know the truck that has Matt and Jeff, uh, Nick and Matt on them, and uh, crap. I mean, very, very dangerous. Um, luckily, it looked like it was fake blood. I don't think it was real blood. Uh, but it looked nasty. And it's, you know, it's nice build-up for the match. I think we're going to get their revenge next, uh, next week, and then at Revolution, they might lose the tag team titles. I don't really think they need to do that, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, really nice build for the tag team title match, even though I'm not a massive fan of it, but it's going to happen one way or another. Um, so yeah, we'll see what our, ne uh, our next match is, uh, Isaiah Cassidy taking on Hamman Adam Page. Ooh, I'm going to look forward to this one, guys. And yeah, let's carry on with AEW Dynamite. There you guys, so we're just currently in the, uh, Isaiah Cassidy versus Hamman Page, uh, match. And this is the reason why I like the, a uh, the AEW referees. So, Mahardy gets involved. Uh, the match is going really well so far, but, you know, they're on the outside, uh, and the referee is distracted by Hybrid 2, who comes out with uh, Adam Page. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy, apologies. And the match is, you know, going on, and Matt Hardy uh, throws uh, Page into the ring steps. And then, the Dark Orders, Silver, and... Um, uh, Johnny, uh, John Silver and his partner come out to explain that hey, wait a minute, he should just stop thrown into the fucking wind steps, yeah, uh, into the barrack, uh, into the post. Hello, you know, and the referee turns around and goes, okay, you out of here, you know, you get out of here. That's what I like about the AEW referees above the and uh, the NXT referees over WWE referees, that they see things. And they don't do anything about it, and they don't see things, and do, you know, they, they don't see things from a manager, and they don't do fuck all about it. And that's what I like about the AEW uh, referees, because it happened, John Silver and his uh, partner come out to explain that, hey, this happened, it's bullshit, and they just go, okay, fine, you fucking out of here, and that's what I like. The match is actually really good as well, you know, I say Cassidy and Page, this is a good match because these, you know, the two guys are bloody good. But I also enjoy the fact that they, the Dark Order, come out to defend uh, Adam Page and, um, you know, and the Good Brothers are not defending uh, the Young Bucks, even though they're friends. That's another thing I like about the AEW uh, commentary, you know, the commentary is good. Yeah, JR slips up a bit, and sometimes it's not good, sometimes, but majority of the time, the pe you know, the commentary is really fucking good, and I think it's actually a really underrated commentary team. Uh, you know, Excalibur's really fucking good with his inside knowledge. Uh, Tony Schiavone has the years of experience behind him with uh, WCW, and also... JR has the inside knowledge, you know, the inside knowledge of the years of experience. And Paige, selling the arm in this match is fucking good. And, yeah, this match is really excellent. And there's a lot of things about this match that I would not change about AEW Dynamite. There are things, I'll probably get into them in a separate video, to be fair, guys, because I do want to talk about what I like about AEW than uh, WWE and some things that need to change. I know I've already done a video about it, but I didn't kind of explain my points. I just went on a tangent. I really need to write it down and actually explain it in a proper video. So we'll carry on watching this match because it is becoming a damn good match and uh, we'll join you at the next uh, commercial break. So we just had Isaiah Cassidy versus Hanman Page and I have to admit, this was a fucking good uh, singles match, great wrestling match I thought Paige stole the arm really fucking well, I genuinely thought he hurt his arm, I don't think he did but he, he just sold it beautifully I thought, uh, gets the win with the inverted uh, tombstone uh, Handman Page does, and then after the match um, 
but when he mad basically goes insane and basically says I'm gonna hurt all the members of the Dark Order that you love and throws five through a table um, and basically sets that up carrying on this feud um, which hopefully will have a, a dark, um, dark Order private party feud which will be very very entertaining then we get Kenny Omega talking backstage building a Moxley extermination device uh, which looks uh, it's basically just going to be barbed wire with explosions in there uh, on a board, so that actually looks kind of cool. And then we have uh, Britt Baker versus Naomi Rose coming up in the semi-main. This is good because finally we get the women's tournament in the semi-main. We get we did get that with the first matchup, um, and the second match we didn't. I think we got that as the second match, if I recall. But it's nice to see that you know this, you know the women's tournament is going very well on. Sunday, I think we've got a breach of report special with the second semi final of the uh, US bracket and the finals of the Japan bracket, which I'm again, it's very good. Also, we've had an announcement for a uh, AEW Games um, 2.0 announcement, uh, which is happening tomorrow with Kenny Omega and Brandon Cutler. I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, this is turning out to be so far a damn good AEW show. Um, very good on wrestling. I think the wrestling's been very entertaining from AEW, and so far, tonight, I think so far, for wrestling based, it's actually been one of the best nights AEW's had. Uh, we'll watch the semi-final match, we'll watch uh, the, you know, the Britt Baker match, and then we'll have Lance Archer versus uh, Ray Phoenix, which I think is going to steal the fucking show, personally. But yeah, we'll watch it. So, let's get to it. Okay, I do apologise about that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, Nairi Rose versus uh, Britt Baker was uh, the same I'm in, and for some reason, my feed just fucking cuts out, and uh, I find out that Nairi Rose beats Britt Baker. I would have thought that it would have been Baker versus Thunder, you know, Rosa versus Fun uh, Baker in the final, the rematch. They're probably going to save that for another pay-per-view, to be fair. Um, but yeah, Naomi Rose wins. Uh, so yes, the AEW ele uh, AEW Dark Elevation has been announced. Uh, it's Paul White, big show, and Tony Schiavone. It premieres Monday, March 15th, so after Revolution. Uh, don't know what it is. It's probably going to be a kind of gut check, check kind of thing with a team. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Next. We'll find out on the 15th. Um, so we just had the Tully Branch uh, build up for the Tully Blanchard and the um, FT, uh, you know, FTR versus uh, Jurassic Express. We have got ooh, Matt Caster versus Dark Orders Ten. Winner faces uh, winner enters the face of the Revolution ladder match. Ooh, well, that's gonna be fucking good. Um, and yeah, that's I'm very entertained by that. Um, but yeah, the women's match. Very fucking good, very entertaining, uh, very high pay, fast paced, high paced. Uh, the building of Revolution, the building of the next week show, which I fucking love. I think that's really great. Um, but yeah, this show so far, I have to admit, AEW's best week for TV. I have to admit, this is like, there we go. Uh, one of their best weeks for TV, and they're building up matches. We have a casino tag team royale. Uh, which is basically a tag team battle royal. Uh, we have Meryl and Sabian versus Cassidy and Taylor. Looking forward to that. We'll probably have uh, the return of um, oh god, I can't think of his name now. Um, I, I can't remember his name. Uh, but the partner of Best Friends. Um, and yeah, very entertaining. We've now got the main event: Lance Archer versus uh, Ray Phoenix. And I feel like there's going to be a debut in the face of the revolution ladder match because there's only two matches so far which is Ray Phoenix and Lance Archer which we've got now and 10 versus uh, Matt Caster so when are we going to get the third match but I feel like it's going to be a debut and I feel like it might be big of a debut so ladies and gentlemen let's get to our main event shall we so we just had Ray Phoenix versus Lance Archer in the main event, and this was a bloody good matchup. I knew these, you know, I knew when I when I first saw this uh, graphic, it would be a good match. But oh my god, it was a very good match. A lot of uh, near falls, a lot of very close near falls. 
uh, inside, outside the win. It was good. Lance Archer gets the win with the blackout. Uh, and then a fist bump at the end between the two guys. So Lance Archer's in the phase of the Revolution ladder match. Uh, we've got the matchup next week with Ten and Matt Caster, which I think it's going to steal the fucking show again. Uh, best match of the night. Um, you know what? It's actually hard to fucking choose. Um... It was a really good show for wrestling. I think this was AEW's best week for wrestling on a whole. Everything was strong. Everything was great. It was brilliant. Um, also, guys, um, the person I was talking to about the whole Tessa Blanchard uh, talk was uh, Morgan. I'm not going to name... I'm not going to give the surname, but Morgan. Um, amazingly, if Morgan, you are watching this, thank you for the conversation. It was really nice. Uh, so, uh, best match for tonight. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for Isaiah Cassidy versus um, Paige. I think that was a really good matchup. So yeah, fuck match. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching AEW Dynamite Week Eight review. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of the week, and I will get a video up about uh, my thoughts on AEW on a whole uh, coming up this weekend. Hopefully, I don't know if it's going to be this weekend, but I will try and do it this weekend. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching, and I will see you next week for the CWS episode. Have fun, stay safe, keep that smile on your faces. TTFN.